Hi, I'm Catherine with the DBU Writing Center. Today we're going to be looking at the differences between MLA and APA parenthetical citations. The two formats actually aren't as different as some students think. In this video, we're going to go over some of the most common citation questions we get for both MLA and APA and talk about the differences. In MLA, there are two basic components to every citation, the author's name and the page number, with no commas in between. APA adds the year, the letter P in front of the page number, and some commas in between. That's the basic citation, if you don't mention the author in the sentence at all. Notice the period goes after the citation, not in the quotation marks. Now, assume you did mention the author's name in the sentence. In MLA, all you have to do is add the page number to the end of the quote or paraphrase. In APA, you place the date in parentheses immediately after the author's name. The page number stays after the quote. What if you have more than one author? If you have two and you're working in MLA, do the same thing, but list both authors with the word and. In APA, do the same thing, but add an ampersand, the and symbol between them, instead of the word and. Once you have three or more authors in MLA, you only list the first one, followed by the abbreviation et al. In APA, you list all the authors for the first citation, no matter how many there are. In all citations after that, you only list the first one with the same et al. abbreviation. Everything else is the same. Internet documents can be especially complicated, so let's look at some of those. Both formats require that if you have an internet source with an author and a date, but no page number, replace the page number with the paragraph number. For MLA, use the abbreviation PAIR. For APA, use PARA. If you're citing a longer source, such as a study, you can also include the section heading and count the paragraphs under that heading. What if you don't have an author at all? Luckily, the rules are about the same. For MLA, in place of the author's name, place the first word of the title, or whichever word you're using to alphabetize the works cited list. Use quotation marks. For APA, use the first few words of the reference list entry, and you can put them in quotation marks or in italics, depending on the source you're quoting. If your author is an organization, such as the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, you can use the organization name as the author. In APA, if you use that source again, you can go a step further and abbreviate the organization if it's recognizable enough. Finally, the list of references at the end of the paper has several important similarities you should know about. The MLA list is called Works Cited. The APA list is called References. Both are in Times New Roman size 12 font, and they're centered at the top of the page, not bolded or italicized. Everything is double-spaced, and every entry has a hanging indent. Alphabetize your sources by the author's last name, or the first important word in the title if you don't have an author. As you can see, there are a lot of differences in how to format MLA and APA reference pages, such as how to format names, where to put the date, and so on. For an in-depth analysis of these differences, check out our videos on MLA and APA formatting, or come visit us in our office in the basement of the Collins Learning Center. And don't forget to subscribe for more helpful writing tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.